So uh, recently I did a video on uh, a supplement which is meant to, um, to prevent Alzheimer's, cognitive decline. It's a supplement called um, phosphatidylserine. And I really didn't cover uh, some of the comparison between that and um, programs that are evolving now, uh, something called cognoscopy. We're actually doing that as well. Um, it's based on a book by a fellow named um, Dr. Dale Bredesen. Dr. Bredesen has worked in um, in a couple of uh, labs, one of which, he's a neurologist. Um, one of the labs that he's worked in actually, I think, won a Nobel Prize associated with the work around dementia. His perspective is that you can actually, it's not permanent. Most of it is, is not anyway. Now that sounds interesting, doesn't it? <clears throat> but let's, uh, let's talk a little bit more uh, about that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> but first, a, uh, an introduction. Ford Brewer, Dr. Brewer, PrevMed, P-R-E-V-M-E-D, um, Prevention of Heart Attack, Stroke, uh, cancer, disability, and dementia. <clears throat> we already knew that a lot of the stuff that we do, uh, for example, uh, prevention of, uh, and management of diabetes, insulin resistance, uh, prevents at least three quarters of the cause of heart attack or stroke. I would say after we get into deeper looks for insulin resistance, things like uh, the, um, the craft uh, or other insulin surveys that you begin to realize there's probably more than three quarters. Um, there's a very s interesting uh, analogy with senility as well. I was having a conversation with uh, uh, Dr. Bredesen about this. I was asking why the training program didn't include more discussion of insulin uh, resistance. It, and I said, you know, I, I expected to hear that uh, three quarters or half to three quarters or more would be uh, of dementia would be insulin resistance related. He brought up some very interesting um, uh, current research looking at things like serine threonine ratio and indicating that it may actually be 100 percent of uh, dementia associated with insulin resistance. Um, uh, they actually are using terms like CNS, insulin resistance, in other words, insulin resistance uh, of the brain uh, when it's not obvious in the rest of the body. Given what I know about the failure to diagnose it in the rest of the body, the more subtle forms, I would, uh, I would say it's probably in the body as well. It's just that the neurologists didn't, uh, they're seeing it in the brain and the internists and family practitioners are just not seeing it in the body yet. So again, an interesting thing to think about. Let's go back though. This is uh, not so much a, a general video. This is a video about comparison of um, a supplement to cognoscopy. Uh, cognoscopy again is uh, the term that we're using. It's looking at looking for cognitive decline and measuring it. Um, <clears throat> Phosphatidylserine, you remember that's the, uh, it's a glycerin, um, the three carbon chain um, backbone with two fatty acids. Those fatty acids are uh, lipophilic and it's got a serine here. So therefore you've got a lipophilic end of this molecule and a water or hydrophilic end of this molecule. Uh, a whole bunch of biochemical geekiness, right? Well, yeah. But that's very important. In fact, it's critical to all of us because phosphatidylserine uh, lines along the inside of the neuron. The neuron's cell membrane, just like the rest of our cell membranes, are, basically consists of two layers of fatty acids. So it's fat soluble. And the fat soluble end of the phosphatidylserine goes here. It tends to signal things like apoptosis or a cell death for the neuron. Um, and this, this diagram indicates this is a healthy living neuron because you see the reds, which are the phosphatidylserines, are mostly on the inside layer. 
when you start seeing a great increase on the outside layer, that's when that neuron is uh, headed for cell death. And uh, the immune system starts using that as a signal pathway to start cleaning up the mess. Now, <clears throat> another uh, review component about phosphatidylserine. It's simple. Uh, you, you can get it from diets by far twice as high as number two, the largest concentration of phosphatidyl serine in the diet would be if you ate cow's brains. Um, the number two, I, I'm, the number two through 10 about our different organ foods. So this is messy, ugly, uh, old stuff that doesn't, in, that is not included on most people's diet. But that's okay because you can get it from white beans. Um, most people that are big believers in phosphatidylserine um, actually just got to get it out of a bottle. <clears throat> now, so you get it through a bottle or some people get it through their diet. Now, what's your probability of it actually working? Well, there's a plus minus story here, the FDA uh, as we covered in that other video, actually does give the makers of phosphatidylserine a, um, an ability to say it may actually prevent loss of cognition, cognitive decline, senility. However, you need to be very, very clear in the next sentence that the FDA doesn't think there's enough um, research evidence to indicate that it clearly does. Now, um, and in fact, in going back and looking at that data, I think the FDA is correct. On both sides of this issue, having some uh, hope there, but also being crystal clear that that's, I mean, most of us wouldn't want to hang our, our future cognition on that. This has struck me as a much, much better solution. Uh, but there are problems, just like there is with everything. This is uh, the author of the book, uh, End of Alzheimer's, and that's a little uh, news video piece that was being done on it. He talks about the 36 causes of Alzheimer's, the, what he calls the 36 holes in the roof. And <clears throat> what he's referring to is things as seemingly arcane as a, um, a low magnesium to zinc ratio, or maybe it's the other way around. I think it's low magnesium to zinc ratio. Now, <clears throat> he goes on to make the point that once you start getting one hole, multiple holes start showing up. Um, he also makes the point that as you start uh, clearing up and patching these holes, there's a, there's a momentum that happens. And sure enough, you start to get significant improvement. Um, with, uh, as I mentioned earlier, one of the biggest holes and maybe one of the biggest drivers as insulin resistance, whether just in our central nervous system or our whole body. Um, many people, by the way, have begun to call Alzheimer's as type three di uh, diabetes. Here's some more comparison between, you know, head to head comparison, a supplement for, um, for brain uh, uh, preservation, dementia prevention, uh, and in many ways you can supplement, you can uh, switch out other ones like ginkgo. Um, so here they are. They're relatively cheap to get a supplement. Easy to do. You just take a pill. Ah, uh, but the the science on actually uh, improving your um, your results is pretty not so good. Now, with the cognoscopy, uh, fairly expensive. I mean, if you go to one of his providers, it's $3,500 for the provider alone. And then uh, a couple of them said there were a couple of times their, the labs had been up to $10,000. It doesn't always have to be that difficult, but it is... Uh, it's expensive. It's a lot more than buying a, a bottle of uh, phosphatidylserine. 
So here's the big thing for a lot. This is a big thing. The second really big difference is that it's difficult. This takes lots of work because it takes, like everything else, like the stuff that we do, the biggest work is done by the patient. It has to do with lifestyle, getting enough sleep. One of the biggest items for both heart attack and stroke prevention, as well as uh, Alzheimer's prevention. Diet, also one of the most important. It may diet may be the most important component of life lifestyle, and clearly in terms of prevention of heart attack and stroke, uh, may probably as well as uh, dementia. Um, Exercise. All of these things, they're not easy. Changing your lifestyle is not easy. So we got two major differences so far in terms of a cognoscopy or a uh, Dale Bredesen version of preventing uh, heart attack, I mean um, dementia, versus the easy way, buying some, a single supplement. Here's the third difference. Uh, I'm not too comfortable that uh, buying phosphatidylserine is going to keep me from uh, getting dementia. Actually, I uh, tended to be a skeptic until I read the book. That knocked out a lot of my skepticism. I went to the training sessions, and uh, they're clear. Uh, I have much more comfort level that, believe it or not, there's actually a lot you can do to prevent dementia. Uh, there was one other component on the slide. Oh, I already covered some of this. So what are the, the treatments that actually do prevent dementia? Actually diet, as we talked about, low carb diet, and especially a key, low ketogenic diet. Meaning you, uh, there's clearly evidence that maintaining some low level of ketosis helps with brain function. Sleep at least seven hours per night. Exercise, uh, high-intensity interval training and resistance training, as well as aerobics. Uh, management of type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance. And maybe we should move that to the top and list it six times because it is critical. But all of these items, guess what? Not only do they prevent Alzheimer's, they also prevent heart attack and stroke. <clears throat> Hopefully we're beginning to get the, the point here. Supplements, yes, there are some supplements, uh, and we'll talk about those <clears throat> in other videos. Um, and ginkgo biloba is one of them. Um, we talk a little bit, the jury, I think, is out a little bit more on uh, phosphatidylserine. There's another one that they uh, that you use a lot called glutathione. We'll do another video on that later. They actually do use brain training. Uh, they use luminosity, I think. And, uh, you know, each of the, one, one of the other concepts about this is that brain training has been used in the past. Um, a lot of these individual supplements have been used in the past, but here's the point. If you've got 36 holes in your roof and you only patch one, you're not going to see a major change. That's the point. You got to do a lot of work to keep from, uh, uh, from letting your brain or your body get old. Thank you for your attention.